All right, in this video, we're gonna take this slotty animation and use GSAP's scroll trigger plugin so that we can control its playback with our scroll bar. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Greg Fine. Over the past 10 years, I've worked on projects for freelance clients ranging from simple WordPress sites to complex full stack React apps. I've also held full-time roles as a full stack engineer and web developer. I love to help others level up their coding skills and bring their creative coding ideas to life. So if that sounds intriguing, be sure to subscribe and let's get into the video. Now, Lotties are a type of scalable SVG animation in the JSON format. So they're lightweight and they scale while retaining their full quality and they also work really great with JavaScript. So let's get into it. And by the end of this video, you're gonna have a new technique to take your web pages to the next level. All right, let's get going now so we can start writing some code and sync up our GSAP scroll trigger with our Lottie animation so we can do something like this. So here I am in VS Code and I have an index.html file and I also have an app.js file. Now in index.html, I've already set up the various script tags that we need. The first one is going to be for the Lottie web package. The second one is going to be for the GSAP core library. Then we have the scroll trigger plugin. And then finally the link to app.js where we're gonna write our custom code, our scroll trigger and Lottie web code. And I'll leave the links down below for you guys to reference for these script tags. The main HTML element that we're concerned with is this div with the ID of Lottie container. That's the element that's going to actually hold or be a container for the Lottie animation. These other divs with the class of helper, I just threw them in there so we can get some scroll height. So in app.js, the first thing that we're gonna deal with is the Lottie Web library. And we get a reference to that here with the word Lottie. And Lottie Web is gonna provide us with various methods that we can use to work with our Lottie animations. So for example, here we're calling the load animation method and we're passing in a configuration object. So what are we doing in here? Well, the first thing that we want to do is we want to get reference to the HTML container element, and that's going to be that div that I showed you before with the ID of Lottie container. And after that, we need to define the path that goes to our JSON file, which holds our Lottie animation. And I can show you really quickly what that looks like. This is the JSON file that holds the Lottie animation data. And this would make for some great relaxed reading in your spare time. And by the way, this Lottie JSON file well, I got that from the Lottie Files website and they have different paid animations. And there's also a lot of really cool free ones that you can use to experiment or use in your projects. Now for the renderer property on line four, we're giving a value of SVG. And that's because Lottie animations are SVG based. And that's the reason why they scale up or down so well without losing quality. And then here we're setting autoplay to false. Since we want to scrub this animation with the scroll bar, we don't want it to start playing automatically. All right, so let's get into the GSAP scroll trigger stuff now. Here on line eight, we're using the register plugin method and we're passing in the scroll trigger plugin. And this is just one of those necessary things that you do with GSAP whenever you're using a plugin. Now here's a really fun part. This is where we're creating a standalone scroll trigger instance. So we do scroll trigger dot create. And in here we pass in our configuration object. For the trigger, that's gonna be that div with the ID of Lottie container. So the trigger is the element whose position in the document is used to define where the scrolling starts. By default, that happens when the element first enters the viewport. So as I scroll down, watch when the airplane first enters the viewport at the bottom, and you can see it starts animating right away. And setting scrub to true is what allows us to control the scroll bar as a scrub playhead, just like you would have a scrub playhead in video editing software. Now the question is, how does the Lottie animation actually sync up with this scroll trigger? That's exactly where the onUpdate function comes into play. The onUpdate function automatically gets reference to the scroll trigger instance itself, which is passed in as self. And on that instance of self, we can access the progress property. And this is gonna show us where the scroll bar is in the scroll zone. Let's quickly log this out to the console so we can actually take a look at the numbers that we're getting. All right, let's start scrolling and let's get to the point where that plane animation enters the viewport, about right here. And we can see we're getting these floating point values, which are gonna be a value between zero and one. So you can think about it like this. At this point, we're at about 10% of the way through the scroll zone. And if we progress a little bit further, you can see 20%, 30%, 
about 40%, and so on, until we get to that 1 at the bottom. So we want to sync up these progress values to the frames of the Lottie animation. And to do that, we're going to use a method that we get from the Lottie Web Library. You can see that method here, which is called go to and stop. Let's take a look at what we're passing into go to and stop. So first of all, we're getting the total number of frames from the Lottie animation. Let's log that out real quick, just so we can see what that is. So in the console, we can see that this animation has 48 frames. And we want to multiply the total number of frames from the animation by the progress amount. So you remember that progress amount is value between 0 and 1. In other words, let's say that since our animation total frames is 48, and we were at the end of the scroll zone, well then we would be doing total frames of 48 times 1. However, let's say that the progress was halfway through the scroll zone, which would be 0 0.5. Well now, we would take total frames of 48 and multiply that by 0 0.5, which is going to give us 24, or halfway through the Lottie animation. And the second argument here of true, this is just saying that the first argument is going to be frame-based rather than time-based. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.